or the cross. Hello, everyone. Let's all stand. Grab a hymnal, please. Turn to hymn number 195. Hymn number 195, please. Sing it with me on the first. Here we go. Down at the cross where my Savior died, down where from cleansing from sin I cried, there to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name, glory to his name, glory to his name. <clears throat> glory to his name. On the last, come to this fountain so rich and sweet. Cast thy poor soul at the Savior's feet. Plunge in today and be made complete. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. Glory to his name. There to my heart was the blood applied. Glory to his name. Amen. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the privilege of coming to your house today. And Lord, we just pray that you would bless it and the t today and, and Lord to lead us and guide us and direct us in the truth of God's word. We pray you would bless the teaching of the word of God the preaching of the word of God all day. And Lord, that we can just say it's been good to be in the house of the Lord. And we thank you for the privilege that you have given to us today. For it's in Jesus' name I pray, amen. You can be seated. Hymn number 151. Hymn number 151, please. Obviously, with Easter just around the corner, uh, very fitting song, Hallelujah, What a Savior. Sing it with me. We'll just sing the first and the last. On the first man of sorrows, <clears throat> man of sorrows, what a name for the Son of God who came, ruined sinners to reclaim. Hallelujah, what a 
Savior. Hymn number 151 on the last. Come on, give it all you got. <clears throat> when he comes, our glorious King, all his ransom home to bring. Then a new soul will sing hallelujah. What a Savior. Good job. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you, Sandy. Appreciate it very much. Um, good morning, everyone. We're glad that you're here and you're at home. We are glad you tuned in this morning. Um, preacher wanted me to uh, give you the announcements, and we'll go over them quickly. Choir practice this evening at 4.30. I think that's standard now that we're getting close to Easter time. Uh, service this evening at 6 o'clock and Wednesday at 7 o'clock. And we encourage you to come to pray with us. And, of course, I think last week the preacher mentioned the fact that we need to come together as a church and to pray. I mean, that's the way God told us to do it. And so we need to assemble ourselves together and pray and ask God's blessing. Next week is Easter Sunday, as you know, and uh, 7 o'clock will be sunrise service with breakfast following, uh, 10 a.m. Sunday school, and then 11 o'clock morning worship uh, with the Easter cantata, and then the 6 o'clock in the evening will be the evening service. Of course, the work day, April the 30th, 9, through 12, uh, 9 to 12 p.m. Yeah, well, okay. Yeah, it will be at 12 o'clock changes then the p.m. Okay. Uh, Philip Pew, Sunday, May the 22nd, Bruce Turner will be preaching, and the Barnett Trio will be here. So click, keep that in mind, if you will. And also, uh, continue praying for the ones that we have mentioned before, and we'll want to mention them again as they uh, are going through some real times of trials and, and things like that. Uh, uh, Miss Pat, she starts her uh, treatment program uh, soon. And then uh, Brother Dave Dawson, I uh, talked to him yesterday, and he's improving. And, uh, and so uh, he'll start uh, rehab on the shoulder sometime. I think it's Wednesday that it said that he would uh, start that. And so um, I pray for him during this time. I know it will be difficult uh, the first uh, several times that he goes through that. Uh, Bob Moore, uh, that's Jennifer uh, uh, Pearson's uh, dad. Uh, of course, you know he had heart surgery, but they put him back in the hospital uh, for a rapid heartbeat and, and so on. So uh, pray, for, continue praying for him, if you will. Henry Reese, and then uh, don't forget to pray for Cindy as well. Wanda Clark. Uh, pray for her health issues, and then uh, Bud is here, and Barb's here, so uh, continue praying for them at various things. The Peacocks, uh, Brother Jerry is having some heart problems and not going to do anything about it, so just pray concerning that. And then, of course, the uh, church, pastor, and leadership, and pray for one another, as we always uh, encourage you to do so. I pray for our country, the president, and uh, the leadership of our country and the state of Indiana as well. I'd like for you to pray for them. And then uh, the policemen and the uh, uh, military continue praying uh, for them as well. And then uh, missionaries uh, pray for them. Uh, Celestine, uh, Brother Celestine's wife died. Uh, Flores, Sam Flores' uh, wife died. And so. Uh, pray for them, if you will, and then uh, the clients that are in um, are getting out of uh, Ukraine. And uh, you have a letter uh, from them uh, in your bulletin this week, and it's very interesting to read that. And, of course, I know that you will. Uh, do we have any new prayer requests that we need to remember? Anyone in this section? How about in the middle section? Anyone? Uh, yes, uh, Pardon me? Unspoken? Okay. Thank you, Karen. Uh, anybody else? Okay. 
okay, Merrick's daughter is unsaved and, and had their car stolen. Wow, okay. Uh, I, I pray for that. Anybody else? Anyone else? Okay, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you that we can assemble together in prayer and, and Lord, uh, be one accord. And uh, Lord, I, I just pray that your, your will will be done in the lives of the ones that we have mentioned uh, to you this morning. And Lord, that's all that we can do is just lift their name up to you and ask that you would uh, do a work in their hearts and life. And, and physically, I pray for their health and uh, strength. And, and Lord, uh, just pray that your will will be done in their life. And pray for the others, our country, and pray for the missionaries. And Lord, uh, we just pray that you would have your precious will and way in everything that's said and done today, for we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, turn in your Bible, if you will, uh, to Daniel chapter, chapter 7. And we're going to be starting with uh, uh, verse uh, 19 uh, this morning. That's a new thought that we have coming. And that's when uh, we see that uh, Daniel is going to interrogate about the fourth beast. Uh, you know, uh, Daniel didn't have any problems uh, with the three beasts because they were named and uh, such. But here we see uh, that the other uh, the fourth beast was unnamed. Uh, and, of course, you'll remember that one uh, as we read that. It was unnamed. So we see the fourth beast that he didn't know about. And, of course, uh, the, this beast was different as we see in verse 19. Let's read that verse 19. And then I would know the truth of the fourth beast, which was diverse or different from all the others, exceedingly dreadful, whose teeth were of iron and his nails of brass, which devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with his feet. Now here we see that in this verse of scripture, and if you'll remember when we, uh, in uh, Nebuchadnezzar's image, the fourth beast, and, and it was told that it had iron and things like that on, on the feet of it and, and the thighs that were, were that way. Well, we found out what that was, and then it went on and talked about this beast, the unnamed beast. And so here we see uh, that this fourth beast is more uh, dreadful uh, with uh, teeth of iron, and of course that, uh, that correlates with the, the bottom of the image that Nebuchadnezzar saw. And then, of course, uh, as uh, God revealed the image to, uh, to Daniel, it was unnamed. And so that's where he has the problem with uh, here. And then it says, his nails of brass and, and devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue uh, with, his piece, uh, with, with his feet. And so here we find uh, in this portion of Scripture gives us a little bit about it. But then uh, if you will look at it, the description a little bit more, uh, going down in verse uh, 23. Uh, where it says this, Thus he said, The fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon the earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms. It will be different. This is going to be a different type of kingdom that you're going to see that is upon this earth. And please remember, it's talking to the Jewish people. It is not talking to the Gentiles. And so there's a lot missing about the Gentiles when we see in the book of Revelation. You have to remember that it's focusing upon the Jewish people and it says, diverse from all kingdoms and shall devour the whole earth. It's going to take in the whole earth uh, when uh, this fourth beast uh, takes over and it says, shall tread it down and break it in pieces. And so as you look at the 23rd verse uh, here in the Bible, you'll find the fourth beast. Uh, is a fourth kingdom and it's going to be coming up on this earth. And, and of course, the a beast is different and all like that. And destruction caused by uh, this beast, is, uh, it's a mighty beast that is coming up on this earth and, and going to be dealing with the nation of Israel. And it says, for it shall devour the whole earth. 
It's going to uh, consume the whole earth in the last days. In the last days, it's going to consume the whole, the whole earth. And, of course, this is n none other than the revised Roman Empire. I don't know whether you remember telling you that Rome has never been defeated. Uh, God took it out of uh, uh, power, uh, but uh, it's never been defeated to the fact that it's uh, just totally, uh, completely gone. And we see the revision of the Roman Empire going to come back uh, one day at a, later, at a later time. And so uh, we see here in that verse of Scripture uh, that is uh, the beast. And then look at verse uh, 20, if you will. In the first part of that, we see, and the ten horns that were in his head. And so we see the ten horns here, and the beast had the ten horns that were in his head, of course, as we read that. But if you go down, uh, go down in verse uh, 24, uh, we see there it says, and the ten horns out of this kingdom are ten kings that shall arise. Now the ten kings, uh, you know, I'm not positive on this, uh, but it could be the European uh, uh, European uh, uh, alliance or the union that is going to be formed. Uh, you, you see that it now has uh, ten, uh, uh, 10 nations that are involved in that. That could be it. Or it could be 10 other nations that are going to come on the scene. Uh, and so it's going to have a ruler over uh, the, the, king, uh, the, the kingdom uh, of each one of those. So we see here uh, the Bible telling us uh, that it is clearly, we learn from the verse 24, the ten horns are the ten kings that shall arise. They haven't come on the scene yet, but one day they will. Uh, when the, the, uh, uh, the beast, the fourth beast takes power, then out of the fourth beast is going to come the ten kings upon this earth. And, of course, we find that the Bible uh, telling us uh, in, in the word of God that it is the, the ones that it says there the, that shall arise. Another shall arise after them, and he shall devise from the first, and he shall subdue three kings. And so uh, we find here uh, in this verse of Scripture, the Bible telling us uh, the, about this other beast. If you go back and look at uh, verse 21, and it says, I beheld in the same horn made war, with the saints and prevailed against them. And, of course, the saints here are the tribulation saints. The ones, and, of course, it's dealing primarily uh, with the Jewish people. Uh, the tribulation period, the first half is going to be, first three and a half years is going to be reverently peace. Uh, the, the, uh, the one that's coming on the scene is going to have peace. But then during the second half, of, of the three and a half years, it's going to be very bad. And so here we see the description that is given of this horn in verse 24. Look down there again, and then we'll go on to look at verse 25, a description of, the, of that horn. And the ten horns came out of the kingdom, and are the ten kings that shall arise, and another shall rise after them. Another one is going to come after the ten kings. And here we see, and it shall be diverse from the first, and he shall subdue three kings, and he shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, thinking to ch think to change the time and the laws, and they shall be be given unto him uh, into his hands until times are time and times and dividing of times. And so here that in verse 24 and 25, uh, we see the description of the horn. And, of course, uh, we know that, uh, it, you know, in, in the Revelation, it is Antichrist that's coming on the scene. And we see in verse 25, you'll see how he conducts himself in the latter part of the three and a half years of tribulation. Uh, there it says, uh, uh, the mo uh, shall speak great words against the Most High. 
it is going to be blaspheming and all like that that it tells us in the book of Revelation about what he is going to be doing. And then it says he shall wear out the saints, the tribulation saints that will be saved during the tribulation period. The Bible says it's just going to put them through the mill. And then it says there to wear out the saints of the Most High, the saved of ones that, that are saved during the tribulation period are, are the saints that are involved here. Now, we know from Revelation uh, that, uh, it, it, uh, that the church is not included in that. They'll already be in heaven. And, and you know, some people have trouble with that thinking when they hear different preachers mention this, and if they're not clear, they, they get you to thinking that, uh, that, the, that we... Uh, the church age will be going through the tribulation period. No, no. In Revelation chapter 4, he calls the church up. We'll be raptured. In the fourth chapter of the Revelation, we're going to go up. And from uh, chapter 4, after we go out, up into heaven, and then everything else in the Revelation, it talks about on this earth that takes place after we have been raptured, and so we're not going to go through any of this at all. This is for the tribulation saints that are saved during uh, the tribulation period. And then uh, we, we see that it's going to try to change the laws, uh, change times and the laws. And, and, of course, we know from the Bible, uh, you look in Revelation once again, it's going to uh, take away the Jewish uh, feast days, and everything is going to make it different and, and all like that. And so, uh, but if you'll notice, it says, and think to change the times of, and the laws, and they shall be given unto his hand until time and times and dividing the time. And so here we see that it's going to be a very short period of time. It's not going to be, uh, you know, uh, it, uh, to them, the saints that go through it is going to think it's going to be a long time, three uh, but we see, first of all, it talks about a time. Uh, it says there, until a time. Now, that's one year. And then it goes on to say, and times. That's two years. And so we see that we got a total of three years so far. And then it goes, and then dividing of time. One year, what is the vision of the time? It's a half. And so we see three and a half years of tribulation, of the great tribulation that the saints, uh, the tribulation saints are going to go through and experience. And of course, we see that it's the three and a half years uh, that uh, they will go through the great tribulation period. And, and we notice that. Then look, if you will, in Daniel chapter 7, and then in verse uh, 26, if you will. We see that it says, but the judgment, but the judgment shall sit. And we see that uh, in order for the judgment to happen, they're going to have to be a judge, right? And so we see the judge is going to be sitting, and we see the judgment that is going to be upon the horn, the, the, the horn that came up out of the ten kings. And so it says there, a judgment shall sit, and they shall take away his dominion. And so the Dominion means uh, his uh, power uh, and things like that will be removed from him. And then it says, and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven. And the greatness of the kingdom, a kingdom under the whole heavens shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose uh, kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominions shall, uh, shall serve and obey him. And so here we see uh, that uh, this after the three and a half years period has come to an end, and then we see that the the kingdom will uh, the dominion will be removed from him, but then there's going to be another kingdom that's coming on, and we see that under this kingdom it says uh, the greatness of the kingdom under the whole earth, and of course that is the kingdom of Christ. That's when Christ comes back to rule uh, this world. And it goes on to say, uh, the kingdom under the whole earth, every, everything upon this earth 
uh, will be under the power uh, and the, the authority of Jesus Christ. And so it says, and shall be given to the people. And Christ is going to give, give the land to the people, to the tribulation saints, to the ones that are saved. The Jews are going to dwell upon this earth. They will not be in heaven. Uh, they'll be upon this earth. God had promised them, if you go back in the Old Testament, and I, don't, I can't remember just exactly where it's at, but God, had, probably in the, the book of Exodus, uh, where the, you see that God had promised that the Jews would have the land. And of course, what, I get to thinking about this, and I think uh, sometimes it, uh, on a, a, you know, uh, I, I a smile at least, thinking that the, the Middle East, those nations think that they got all of this and they're going to do away with the Jewish nation of Israel and they're going to possess all of that land. Well, it's going to be just the opposite. Israel is going to, uh, to have the whole, whole earth. Everything uh, is going to be Jewish and, of course, we will be in the New Jerusalem coming down from heaven and th certain things like that but that's getting into the book of Revelation, which we'll not do. And it says, and, and shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. And talking about the Jewish people, will possess the land at this particular time, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion shall serve and obey him. And of course, that's the, the, uh, that's the kingdom of Christ, which back in Matthew chapter 13 you remember when the Jewish people refused the king and said, we'll not have this man to rule over us. And they, uh, God presented the kingdom to them at that time. They refused it and let us kill him and all like that took place. But here we see they're finally coming back into the land. But we see that the Bible telling us here uh, that uh, we see the damnation and destruction uh, of the uh, judgment of the horn. I want to read you uh, something about this uh, judgment of the, of, the, uh, of the horn. If you will go into your Bible in uh, first, uh, Second Thessalonians chapter 2, in verse 8 through 10, we see uh, just a little bit more of the detail uh, of the one horn that we were talking about. And shall... Uh, then in verse 8 of 2 uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, it says, Then shall the wicked be revealed, whose the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him who is, whose coming is after, <clears throat> is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceitfulness, and unrighteous in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. And so here we see the details about the damnation, the destruction of the, of the one beast. And, and then go back, if you will, into our, our text of the book of Daniel. And notice, if you will, in the seventh chapter, of course, in verse 27, uh, where that we see here, uh, that in verse 27, we we'll get there shortly. It says there in uh, another thing that will take place. And it says there, and the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heavens shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High, whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and dominion and will serve him. And so here we find that once again, uh, Daniel, uh, 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 the angel that came down that we think it's Gabriel, not real sure, uh, he is confirming for Daniel that the saints, the Jewish people, will have dominion over the whole earth. And then it says there, and all dominion shall serve him, serve and obey him. And so it's going to be an everlasting kingdom there. And, and there's four things that I want to mention about uh, verse uh, set, uh, 27. The four things are said about this kingdom. First of all, the Bible says the great. It's a great kingdom, the greatness of the kingdom. 
and it's going to be a great kingdom, and, and then it shall, it shall be given to the people, the saints, that are saved during the tribulation period. And, of course, the Most High is going to be the ruler, the king, and it's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we see that in the latter part of that, it's going to be an everlasting kingdom, an everlasting kingdom, and all dominion uh, it shall serve and obey him. Everyone that's going to be there going to be serving the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ. They're going to be obeying him. And, and uh, that is going to be a glorious time uh, for the Jewish people. And, of course, I'm sure that when Daniel began to see this, uh, that he was no longer troubled, although we see that the end he does, does say that his connotations and things like that troubled him and all like that. Look, if you will, in, in verse 28. And hitherto is the end of the matter. The Bible says this is the end of the matter. In other words, the vision is complete. It's gone. And, of course, we see the Bible telling us here the conclusion of it. Uh, as for me, Daniel, my cogitations uh, much troubled me and my countenance uh, changed in me, but I kept the matter in my heart. And so here we find that in verse 28, the conclusion of the, of the vision that God gave to Daniel, uh, and of course there's two things that I want to mention here. One of them is uh, my cogitations. Uh, what is that talking about? It's talking about his thought, the way that he was thinking before he he knew about the fourth kingdom, the fourth beast. He didn't know anything about it, so it troubled him. And, and things like that. It, the thinking, his thinking was off. Uh, it, what's going to happen to the Jews? And, of course, we know that he was a very uh, patriotic Jew. He cared for the Jewish people. He wanted the very best for them. And so we see that his thinking was just a little bit off about what is going to take place with the, with the people. And then it says, my countenance, uh, my countenance change in me. And here we see the Bible telling us, uh, once again, uh, the appearance uh, inwardly, and of course it came to the outward part. His countenance changed, and, and uh, in me, he said, and then of course it revealed itself uh, as outward appearance as well. But the Bible says here that he kept the matter in his heart. You know, uh, if you go back into chapter 7, the first part, where it says that Daniel wrote, he wrote down, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> he wrote down of what was, what's going to take place. What we're reading now, he wrote that down. But then, not only that, but the Bible says uh, that here, that, uh, uh, but I kept the matter in my heart. When he wrote it down, then he kept it. He just didn't forget about it. He kept it in his heart. You know, that's a great lesson for us. When we read the Bible, we ought to keep it. We ought never to let it go. We ought to build upon it and just continue to grow uh, in the things of the Lord. And, and when we do that, when we read something from the Word of God, then we ought to keep it in our heart. We should never let it go. And that's one of the ways uh, that we can be a more effective uh, child of God, that we can be a better Christian, because we have kept it in our heart and we can recall it at any time. And that is a, a tremendous uh, lesson for, uh, for us to realize, to keep it in our heart. After we read it for ourselves, that's why we want you to follow along with us when we study the book of Daniel. What you, what you have received, now I'm not saying you're going to receive everything that is in the book of Daniel. It's a very difficult book. It's a very hard book uh, because uh, not many have taught on it. Not many have said anything. 
Uh, you know, they talk about Daniel and lion's den and, and things like that, and they talk about the, uh, the three Hebrew children being, uh, uh, you know, and different things like that. You see that. But nothing down to where that you can really uh, base uh, something upon. But when we hear the Word of God and read it for ourselves, then we ought to take note of it and keep it in our heart. And at any time that we can recall it, uh, when we read, you know, uh, you don't think about it all the time. You know, if you thought about uh, the scriptures all the time, uh, you, you, you know, you wouldn't be doing anything else but just uh, thinking about scripture. But when a, uh, a chapter comes up or something like that, comes up and, uh, and you begin reading this, oh yeah, yeah, I remember this about that. I put it in my heart, and that's what we ought to do. We ought to keep it in our heart when we hear from the Word of God. Daniel did that, and of course, that's uh, when we as read the Bible, uh, hear the Bible, uh, being taught, then we need to keep it in our hearts. Well, I'm just going to give you an introduction to chapter 8. I will not go into it in detail, but uh, first of all, there's something that you might be interested in. Now, I don't know if you're interested in it or not, but I, I will tell you. Uh, we see that starting from chapter 8, and it takes you all the way to the end of the book of Daniel, chapter 12, is written in Hebrew. Is written in Hebrew. Well, what difference does that make? Because it is focusing upon the nation of Israel. But then the first part, uh, Daniel chapter 1 cha up to chapter 7, it is written in Aramaic. In other words, it had to do with the Gentile nations. It, and of course it involved the Jewish people, but predominantly it was about the Gentile nations or the Gentile kingdoms and different things, rule and things like that. But here we're going to see the changing of it. And, of course, we, in our Bible, we don't see that. But if, uh, you know, I got to thinking about this a little bit yesterday, and I thought about it before. But if we can get a Jew to read the book of Daniel and, 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 and in their, their Bible, I believe that they would see something that probably they've never seen before. And they have realized what is going to be taking place uh, in, in this world around about us. And, and of course, uh, we see uh, through that in chapter 8, going all the way through, is, uh, the text is written in Hebrew language. And of course, it's up on the nation of Israel. The emphasis will be placed upon that. And of course, God has a plan for them in the end time. God's plan is for them. And of course we have read just a little bit about that. And one of the purposes of chapter 8 through 12 will be uh, to prepare Israel. If they read the Bible, it's going to prepare them for what is coming up on them. And you know, God always does that. You know, he... He prepares the unsaved of what they're going to experience if they don't get saved. If they'll read the Bible and they're unsaved and they see that, and God prepares them for what they're going to eventually end up in the lake of fire in hell. He always prepares. He prepares the saints of God as well. What is going to be taking place? Preparing us for what is, is going to take place down in the future and things like that. He always prepares us uh, for a time. And of course, we see here that God is going to prepare Israel for the suffering that they're going to go through during the great tribulation period. And so God doesn't leave them in the dark. And, and so Israel, by and large, is not unprepared. God always prepares his people, always prepares the people for whatever. The unsaved, uh, they don't, you know, 
if they read the Bible, they know the outcome of it. They know where they're going to be. The saved knows where they're going to be. And so we just see, <coughs> see from, uh, from uh, the, the scriptures here of how God prepares his people for anything and, of course, preparing the Jewish people. And then one other thing, I'll mention this, and you can look at it as you read chapter 8. There's five persons that are mentioned in chapter 8. And, of course, the first one would be Daniel. But then we see that there's four others. And, of course, they're, uh, you know, from a ram and, and different things like that. Uh, but we'll get into that later. But look, if you will, and see if you can find the, uh, the, five, uh, or the other four persons. We know the first one is going to be Daniel because we, we see it tells us there uh, even unto me, Daniel, of course, that reveals who he's talking to here. But we're going to be looking at five different people next week. And, and I want you to read chapter 8, if you will. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the word of God. And Lord, when we find truth and we understand it, Lord, help us to hide it in our heart that it might be a help and a blessing uh, to ourself and to other people. And Lord, we just pray that your will will be done and ask you to have your way in the morning service, speak to our hearts, challenge us. For we ask it all in Jesus' name, amen. All right, you're dismissed.